over 50% of our secondary schools have now gained specialist status. Nationally, over 1.5 million pupils are now taught in specialist schools, the key element in the government's drive to personalise education. Schools are encouraged to work to their own particular strengths and the relationships they develop with business have benefits for both sides. We decided to have a look at a cross-section of secondary schools in the Southampton area and to investigate how this cooperation with industry is making an impact. Our first case study features Red Lodge School, which provides a caring and safe environment for pupils with learning difficulties and special needs. Now we already last week looked at the different work areas that you could choose to go to. What do you think you will learn from going out on a work placement? What will be the value for each of you? James? Learning to um, communicate with adults. Yes, a really important skill that you would use in any job area. Good, well done. Some really important <coughs> things that are going to come from going out on work experience. Firstly, to work with new adults, to work in a team, to learn to interact and communicate. James, what um, sort of choices have you got? I like to do some work in a hotel. Why? Have you thought about um, the particular area within a hotel that you might be interested in? Um, an environment where I'm doing housekeeping. Housekeeping? Oh, well done, James. Your mum would be really pleased if you learn about that. Okay. Um, I think that that will be a placement I can find for you. An interesting job, um, one that will give you skills not just for working, but for being a young adult and looking after yourself. Well done. And so as well as the actual skills, work-related skills that you've learned, you'll come away Several pupils from Red Lodge School have spent their two weeks of work placement in the nearby Hilton Hotel, Chilworth. Today, Celia is escorting James on a return visit to the hotel after recently completing his on-the-job training in the housekeeping department. James is intending to apply for some permanent work in the summer holiday. He will be hoping to follow in the footsteps of former pupil Samantha, who has now worked at the hotel for some time. For our students particularly, because um, their needs are slightly different to mainstream pupils, I think work experience is one of the biggest advantages that we offer them. Um, the confidence, the self-esteem that they develop from going out, meeting people, working with new adults is a real pleasure to watch and I believe it actually helps them move on from us into college or into training far more successfully. Firstly, mostly, I would start off from this section here. You see the, the towel rack, the bin, the pillars. Then, unfortunately, I would move on to a toilet and use chemicals and a scrubbing brush and flushing. We have learned an awful lot by having people like James from Red Lodge School and Sam, who have come to us because obviously with our training programme that we have, we learn people have different levels of skills. They need more training in certain areas than they do in others. However, we do find that people with learning difficulties, once they have learned something, they seem to absorb it more and keep the knowledge more than maybe an able-bodied pupil. I found it very flattering. It's um, it was a wonderful environment at the Hilton. I um, I got great experience from it, and I'll never forget. Sholing Technology College is an all-girls school. They were the first school in Southampton to achieve special status, and they have already forged useful links with several business partners. My name is Karen Dagwell, I'm the head teacher at the Shoding Technology College and we've been a specialist college now for 18 months and in that time we've really developed a lot of working relationships with business partners and in particular with VT who are now based at Portsmouth. The students have access to working with some very top professional people in particular the graduate uh, designers who come and work with the students and we get to roughly between 10 and 15 of those each week 
and they really have worked, built up a partnership with the students. The students have got role models that they can aspire to in terms of engineering, in terms of design, and we are taking that one step further so that in September we have a, a big launch for our Young VT Graduate Award Scheme. I'm Paul Johnson and I'm Assistant Head Teacher at the Shailin Technology College. Uh, this week for us is Technology Week. Uh, the highlights in fact this week are that we've been very privileged to have the Enigma machine for two days and we've also got today the Star Chaser rocket um, and that's a really good opportunity to, for us to focus on the topic of space. See, we've linked up as well with our National Space Centre which is based in uh, Leicester. Uh, we will have a video conference link with them tomorrow and what we're actually looking to do there is to actually quiz the Space Centre about the exploration of Mars. Couldn't wait to get into school. <laughs> it's massive. The biggest thing that we have to tackle is the gap that exists between what we deliver, uh, not just in terms of the skills and in terms of the, the concepts that we teach, but also in terms of the aspirations that we're looking to build into, into the young people here at, at school. Um, what we've been amazed at, really, is just the way in which our industry partners, mainly the IBM, uh, the British Airport Authorities, BAA, um, and, and VT Shipbuilding in particular, they have really met us more than halfway in actually recognising that that gap exists as well. VT are a long established company who recognise the value of supporting the bright young recruits of the future. We've been working with the Shelling Technology College for about two years and have started a number of initiatives with them. We started off using our one and a half kilowatt laser to cut wooden piece parts to the girls' specific design for a seat project and we also supported the Year 11 competition group. More recently we've expanded the use of our laser, we now support the Year 10 and Year 11 competition groups and we also have two of our graduate engineers on a rotating basis actually supporting classes in the college every other week. In the long term, we potentially get access to a greater number of people to come to us as potential employees. Women are poorly represented in engineering in general and in shipbuilding specifically. In the short term, the work that our graduate engineers do with the college is priceless in terms of training to them. It's always very easy to look at things as a cost, but we tend to look upon our work with the college as an investment. We are very pleased to be working in partnership with VT and we know that VT will get a tremendous amount out of it as well. We are launching with VT their, uh, the Young Graduate Award Scheme where our students in the upper school will go through a bronze, silver and gold award scheme which VT are sponsoring and our students will be able to win prizes and sponsorship. These are going to be the young women of the future. These are going to be the women who will eventually go through into industry as engineers, as designers, and VT can see that as a tremendous potential for them to be able to recruit our young women into industries such as theirs. The NHS is of course one of the largest employers in the UK, but recruits for medical staff are often drawn from a limited number of schools. The head teacher of Redbridge Community School was extremely pleased when one of his pupils expressed their desire to become a doctor and he proceeded to enlist the support of some leading healthcare professionals. Okay. Redbridge is a brilliant school and I'm not just saying that because I'm a pupil. Over my time here I've been offered a great deal of support in helping me to achieve my goals and realise my dreams. One of our students, Lisa, spoke to us about her dream to become a doctor. And we were obviously delighted to be able to look at how we could support her in fulfilling her ambition. We were extremely fortunate in having as one of our governors, uh, Gwen, who has had a lifetime's experience in the health service as a nurse and has a husband who has also been involved in the health service as a doctor. I have no contact with anybody who works within the NHS. Yeah. And also I was concerned about um, how I was going to get into medicine. I'm sure get you in contact with a very nice GP husband and wife who I'm sure would talk to you and Roger I think would probably guide you towards the hospital and maybe take you around there and show you uh, different aspects of it and different careers. 
GPs that Gwen was able to introduce uh, Lisa to provided an invaluable resource and gave Lisa a real insight into the working life of local doctors. And in turn, this has led on to an opportunity for Lisa to visit the local general hospital, along with one of our other governors who, until fairly recently, was also employed at the hospital. Chris, thank you very much indeed. Let me introduce you to Lisa, because you're somewhere to Redbridge. It's gone down since I've been a You may, in certain specialities, be required to do a year of specialised research. And then, if you think it's all over, it's not. <laughs> because what you find is there is a period of time um, where you're expected as a consultant obviously to maintain your skills, because medicine doesn't stand still. Yes, good morning. Hello. Hello. This is a patient transfer. Uh, this is intermediate. The intermediate. The response bag. Right. If we're on a, an emergency, we take this in to the patient's house. So Apply on, pads. I won't undo Plug those. in connector. We'll plug this in. Attach leads. But these, uh, these are disposable now. We don't blow the edges up like you said. Yeah. During the six weeks holidays at the end of year 10, I just woke up and I realised being a doctor is what I want to do. Um, I don't care that perhaps the hours are going to be unsociable or that the pay won't really, you know, be an incentive to begin with. I just realised that it was what I really wanted to do. IBM have long had a healthy reputation for supporting the training of young people. Two pupils who have gained experience from such training are Damon and Andrew, and today they are revisiting the Hursley site to talk to Dorothy Buckingham about their job prospects with the company. I've learned a lot from my work experience from being at IBM. I learned the world of business is not what I, what I thought it was. It's a lot harder, but it has strived me to think of working for IBM and definite and I've met a lot of friendly people and that has helped me a lot and I hope other businesses offer that to students of my age. After doing a two week stretch at IBM, my work experience, um, during my time I had a really great time, I met loads of friendly people and that. I think it's given me like a realistic opportunity of work experience and a really good clarified the, my future career, what I want to do as a future career. You kind of get the feel when you're actually working here, you have to use all your skills really and it does help you to use them. You get to learn new things, you get to basically feel more mature and as an adult. We've had a programme in place where we've been working in partnership with IBM for coming on near three years. Uh, that programme's included a range of different activities. Sometimes it involves work placements, sometimes it involves members of staff from IBM coming out and delivering master classes in, in the school, teaching and lessons. Uh, we've had competitions, activity days, support financially, support with equipment. So it's been really quite a, a large range of uh, events and activities that IBM has been involved with us with. I've brought two students down that came here on work placement a couple of weeks ago and they spent two weeks here working at IBM. Um, these students had actually been involved with other activities themselves with IBM, so it wasn't the first time for them to come down here. Um, today, I've asked them to come down and basically follow up from their experience before and perhaps um, talk to people that they worked with before and have an opportunity to meet and thank Mrs um, Buckingham, who organised it for them. Do you think uh, that um, this, these kind of programmes improve the chance of getting jobs? They could do. We recognise that there's a shortage of skills in the future, or there will be, particularly in the IT industry. And all the young people that take part in our programmes are potential future employees for us. How do you actually develop the programmes you run? Many of the programmes that we run are developed by young people who are already working here, industrial trainees, graduates. It is a, a wonderful opportunity for them to get involved in yeah. things project management, training and personal development. Um, it also is a super way of allowing them to showcase some of the skills they have and different ways of using technology. Do, overall, do you think it costs quite a lot for you or is it? 
not too expensive. It's not about giving money. Um, it's just a diverse way of Very well motivating done. your workforce. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. Mm. The responsibility levels, the levels of responsibility you actually get for working in a place like this. You actually do feel more mature, you do feel more grown up. So how do you think I can improve that then? You should take the drop down menu using that in the banner and try to put it on our website. Yeah. For the Woodlands Community School will shortly achieve special status majoring on engineering. Recently the school has begun to develop links with various local companies and planning has commenced on an exciting project for Ford Manufacturing at Swatheling. We're doing an architectural model for Ford for their employees. Okay, and a, a useful thing will be finding out how a model is made, isn't it? So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, you're going to, um, you're going to take us to an architect's office so where we can learn new skills and the skills that we learn there we will use on this project. This project is, is very much a project where we want to involve local businesses with the school and luckily uh, my link through Solent Skills Quest, Robin, um, has enabled me to contact Fords and through that Fords have come up with a fantastic project that we can work on together. We need to actually make a scale model. Do you know what a scale model is? What's a scale model, Amy? Something that's smaller than the actual size that it would be. That's good. The proposal was for Fords to use an unused area within their uh, company, within their factory, and they wanted to utilise this area for their workforce. I've involved two children on this project on the understanding that the GCSE project that they're doing is very much to support Ford in proposing um, what they would like on this new site, on this new area. Ford are making all the decisions on what the layout is going to look like and my two children, Hayley and Ashley, are going to actually then make the model. Um, my name is John Pound, training manager at uh, Ford Motor Company in Southampton. Um, we were approached by Sonic Skill Quest to uh, work with Woodland School uh, in their endeavours to become a specialised school for engineering. Um, we're currently working on a project in plant where we have 16,500 square metres of uh, production space but we are looking to put some zone facilities in. We are planning to work with Woodland School, they will be developing or putting together uh, a model of top floor C as we, as we know it that will just give a 3D image of that particular area and we're hoping then to take that model and when we start, start to talk to various suitors about them coming on board with us and making this a reality, then we have something that we can show them. Um, education provides uh, our employees of tomorrow and it's very important that as, as a business that we take every effort to uh, make education and, and pupils within education aware of the type of careers that are actually available to them and be, by becoming involved with, with schools we're able to do that, we're able to establish links and to demonstrate that perhaps some of the myths about some of the industries aren't what they seem. One of the biggest problems that we have in schools is that sometimes when we want to contact businesses we don't know who to talk to. We're very, very lucky that we've got Solent Skills Quest and, and they are a very, very good um, business education link and they do actually have some very, very good contacts that we can talk to directly, like the example I've given earlier with Fords. So by being smaller, everything that we're going to make on the model is actually going to be much reduced. Okay, so even down to Both Fords and Woodland School recognise the value of the service provided by Solent Skill Quest. We spoke to Angela Wright, who is the Chief Executive for the organisation, and asked her why industry should consider building links with local schools. There are many reasons why business should be involved with schools. Um, I could talk to you about corporate social responsibility, about investing in the future workforce, or even about the fact that young people will be paying our pensions in the longer term. But actually there are more short-term benefits that I would hope business would get out of a relationship of working with a local school. One of my real passions is the way that we use different business contexts to support curriculum innovation. 
and uh, it's so exciting when we have construction or engineering or the retailing sector or even leisure and tourism and we use those different sectors of industry as the stimulus for, for curriculum development for young people to learn about that industry but in the context of their normal classroom teaching. We have a group of experienced project managers who also take a responsibility of managing particular schools and their relationships with local businesses. If you would like to be involved in working with a the school then please get in touch. We're at Abacus House, One Spring Crescent, Portswood, Southampton, SO172FZ or contact us at inquiries at solentskillquest.co.uk and we'll get back to you promptly and start making that connection with the local school. So as we have seen, cooperation and support between business and schools already exists and is working well to improve the prospects for both pupils and industry. If you need further information, simply contact Solent Skill Quest or speak to your local school directly. Today's pupils are your employees for tomorrow and you now have the chance to influence their education.